you with all of our hearts we love you you are my friend and you are my brother even though even though you're a king i love you more than any other so much more than anything lord we love you we love you with everything we are we love you with everything we have we just pray that you would speak to us today we just pray that you touch our hearts today we just want to know you more today than we did a minute ago because there's nothing there's nothing we desire that compares with you there's nothing lord you're my friend and you're my brother even though you're a king i love you more than any other so much more than anything <clears throat> I want to I want the Lord to speak today 
I want the Lord to meet us today. And he so desperately wants to, because he showed me that. When I was in the bathroom praying, I was tired. I was really tired. I work hard. And I, Lord, if, if you don't go with me, as Moses says, I'm not going. I can't. I have nothing to say. You know what he showed me? He said, I'm going to go with you because I love them. And I said, okay. So I'm grateful for that. My, um, I want to give honor. I, 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 I preached in Baltimore um, on, on Sunday, and I don't even know. I don't know if that's what I'm going to talk about today. But I'd like to start out, <clears throat> start out with something that... Oh, this is embarrassing. I'd like to start out with something that um, my late wife, I want to give honor to my late wife, Linda. She was the worship leader in the church that I um, pastored. And in the middle of worship, she was singing a song like this. And she said that she felt that God had given her something in her heart that she wanted to share it. And I want to share it with you because it's very important. Can you all hear me okay? Just checking. All I see is dun, 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 811. She said, I see a picture in my mind's eye of a man tired, tired, really tired. And he's carrying these bags, these heavy bags, heavy bags. And his fists are wrapped tightly around it. She said that. And we're all listening. And nothing, God saying, to take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> Yet he couldn't let it go. He couldn't let it go. The baggage, he couldn't let it go. And then she said, all of a sudden, she kind of saw this oil being poured over him. And as the oil was being poured over him, his hands were able to loosen his and loosen the grips of the bag of the baggage the heavy yoke and you know there are only a few things there are only a few things that are necessary in life yet we pick up bags we pick up all sorts of things that are necessary and we think whether it's um obligation responsibility over you know just being over responsible, or even if it's bad things like things we shouldn't be doing, the yoke of sin is very heavy. The yoke of taking things on ourselves that are not ours to get a burden to bear that's not ours is very heavy. Taking on a yoke that only He can bear is not good, it's actually a kind of idolatry. But you know, the thing about God is that he's just so good and that what he'll do with us instead of condemning us for our foolishness, he'll love us into freedom. I'm sorry, that was a text from a pastor friend of mine. I'll check that later. He loves us into freedom and he pours out his spirit upon us. And... um. And the guy was able to lay down his bags, and he was free. And that's what I'm hoping for us, a freedom. Freedom comes not by what we know. <laughs> freedom doesn't come by what you know. Believe me, it doesn't. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, freedom comes from who you know. <laughs> freedom comes from knowing Jesus. And when I, my testimony of how I came to the Lord was miraculous. I'm a Jewish man. I'm just, I'm not going to give you my testimony, but I'm going to say that I had a miraculous appearance from God out of the darkness. I needed that because I was so far. I was actually reading the word because I didn't know what I was talking about when I was approached about these things about Jesus. It's a long story short. It was my mother-in-law, my first wife's mother-in-law. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, my first wife passed away, and I'm remarried, and we're expecting a child. Hallelujah. 
So as I'm reading, uh, it was uh, the, the, the living translation is a paraphrased translation. This, I t kid you not, the spirit of God comes into the room. I didn't know anything about this spirit of God. I was dark. I didn't know. He could, you know, God does what he wills and he did it with me. He, his spirit made an appearance on the scene and I actually had a vision, an actual technicolor vision on the left-hand side. I saw my family and friends rejecting me for because I'm Jewish. And on the right hand side, on the right hand side, I saw the truth. I saw uh, persona. I saw real truth. I saw truth that had. Tr there was no. <clears throat> there was no shifting shadow in this truth. It was pure truth, holy truth. I didn't know the words for what kind of truth it was, but it was really real. And I was uh, reading on uh, the. Uh, the New Testament, the Sermon on the Mount. I got to the Sermon on the Mount, and all this happens because all this came to me because I this this Jesus was starting to resonate with in my heart deeply. The things he was saying were true; they were loving. He wasn't the Jew, Jew hater I thought he was, and I was taught he was. And 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 he was more than the good teacher that my father said he was. We believe that he was a good teacher. Well, how do you, my, my, my to-be mother-in-law said, well, how do you square that with the fact that he, if he was raised from the dead? And I didn't know. So I had to find out. And I started reading. And then, then all heaven broke loose for me. And um, when I saw that truth, that pristine, holy, beautiful truth, my heart was drawn to it. And I found it in the Word. And... I said in my heart, and some of you know this, I've I put my video testimony up. I said in my heart, this is the truth, and if need be, I would die for it. And that presence out there went whoosh, right into the, my midsection. It, I, and, and, and it was no longer outside. It was in He was in me. And I didn't know I was born again. I didn't know what I was. But I w walked upstairs, and my to-be wife said, what have you been doing? And my first act as a Christian was to lie. I said, nothing. Why? I didn't want anyone to think I was becoming a Gentile. So um, that was my narrow mind, narrow-minded mindset at the time. So she said, your face, it's different. She said, literally, she, I, she would tell people later on, years to, there was a light coming off of my face. He who had come inside of me was the gl his glory was showing off of my face. I had gone from darkness into light, and she said that <clears throat> my whole countenance changed. I got to tell you the truth: any encounter with God changes you forever. You're marked by Him. You don't believe me? Let's go to the Word. What happened with Jacob? Jacob wrestled with theophany, with, with Jesus, I believe, all night long. That's right. Thank you, Psalmist. And you can do that. All night long, he was wrestling with, with him. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. I won't let you go. And Jesus, you know, Jesus is saying he is enjoying our... He died for us that we would have fellowship with him, not just... <clears throat> to know about him, but that we would walk with him. He walked in the garden with Adam, that he would do life with us. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He who opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. I used to think, well, that's what you do at an altar call, right? You do that at the altar call? God, you open the door to Jesus, he comes into your heart, you're saved, willy-nilly, you're done. No. How many times a day do you eat? If you eat once a lifetime, you're going to die. I eat three times a day in snacks. I eat a lot. He wants to come in. He's saying, I'll come into your heart. I'll come into your life. We'll do life together. We'll do life together. That's what he wants from us, is an abiding relationship. You know, I was telling my wife just now over dinner, you know, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, 
the wind blows and you don't know how can this be born again the wind blows you don't know where it's coming or where it's going and so it is and so it is with those who are born from the spirit who are born of the spirit the wind blows but the thing is that okay that's how you're born again right wrong that's how you live with him because god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth the wind my friends and god wants you to know this i believe this the wind is continues to blow he fills our heart with his presence he fills our heart with himself he does life with us i must i must have him so how do i find him if i seek him with all of my heart god will um do in public through you what you're doing in with what with how you bend the knee to him in the secret place in your in your secret place in the secret yes of your heart when no one is looking when you say i need you in the, in the privacy of your of your bedroom when you're worshiping him when you're praying to him when you're reading his word i meditate i meditate i meditate on his word a lot a lot in fact a lot of my day is spent spending talking to him i preach to myself all day long i preach to myself i i expound on the word i chew on him his word unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot have any part of me so i want part of him i want to know him i want to know him i want to drop the things that are not of him i want to i want to drop sin i have to tell you i have to tell you that sin doesn't hold a candle to jesus sin doesn't hold a candle to knowing him sin doesn't hold a candle to, to being with him sin doesn't hold a candle to the presence of his spirit in your life as you're abiding and walking with him it's like turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace it is true my father my my former father-in-law's favorite song in the garden i walk in the garden alone i don't know all of the words but i will say and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own you ask me how i know he lives he lives inside my heart this is an abiding relationship with him and we need to hear it because you know what knowing about it isn't good enough knowing the bible isn't good enough i've been there the bible is the road is the is tells me how god moves he's it's true the bible will is the only book that the author is still speaking to through to this day he speaks to me through his word but do you know that this 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 me who had this encounter with god grew cold and stale and and I, I was i was desperate because that same god i was starting to serve him in ministry that same god who i knew i couldn't put the word down in the beginning i was reading and reading and reading because that's where i met him i met him in his word but i started to know the word if, hear me now i started to know the word to know about the word but there was a chasm in my heart because i knew what the word says and i was falling way short of what the of the glories of what the word talks about is a relationship with god and i was getting drier and drier and drier and more and more desperate for him i felt like i needed to be forgive my heresy born again again I needed another and I needed to, to encounter him again. And thank God he met me. And um 
and he'll meet he meets us all he'll meet with you i don't know if there you know if there's anybody here uh thank you thank you that's right and and it also says thank you so much for that psalmist it also says he, he also says if we walk by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit you can spout out all of the scripture but be empty in your heart if you don't have the if your relationship isn't current and it's relationship it's not about how much i know i have been reading the bible i've been a christian for what 43 years and i've been going through the bible every year for decades i know the bible i read it every day i know the bible extremely extremely well i may not be able to give you a chapter and verse for everything i quote off the top of my head but i know it and i know where it is because i ingest it i live it i mean i i live in the bible by reading it all the time it's important but there's if there's a disconnect between the bible and the writer of the bible that we're going to have trouble because i cannot tell you in this place and in other places i cannot tell you how many times i hear christians say they got all the spew they got all the verbiage they got all the lingo but they don't have the substance because there is no joy there is no joy we're walking in futility because you know what is your expectation what is your expectation of god sometimes we need to we need to let god be god you got to let god be god and just follow and and we not we need not to put um qualifications on him well, if God were if God were God, that He would do this, or if God were God, He would deliver me from that. I cannot tell you how many times I hear that. If God were God, promised me, or God said this, His Word says this, and they're holding God up. In you know, a thousand years, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day to God. We submit to God, and what does He give us in return when we ask for something? Hmm? When we ask for something, he gives us his will, he gives us his person, he gives us his peace, he gives us his presence. And the answer to our, our prayers is in what? Is in his time. So I say to God, I say to God, keep your answers. I want you. I want you so much. I want you more than any answer. I'm not coming to you for stuff. I'm not coming to you that you should give me this or give me that. I believe you. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because those who would please God, I want to please God. I, want to, I don't know about you, but I want to please God. I love God. He saved me. I was in darkness. And he saved me, not only when I became a believer, but he saved me from myself. He saved me from circumstance. He saved me from, from sin. He, 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 he um, pulled me aside, sanctified him. He sanctified me for himself in my, in my body, in my heart, in my mind. He saved me from myself and from my sin. He saved me over and over and over again because when he showed up, when he touched me with himself, I was changed. So much so, and this is what I hope for everybody here. What I hope for everybody in my who are my friends, that you should know this God. I know you know him, and I don't mean to insult you, but you should know this presence of this God so much so that you are changed to where you can say, keep your answers, I want you. I'm going to make my requests known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will, as the amplifiers say, garrison your hearts, guard your hearts like a Roman guard. It'll guard your hearts and 
and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God is our legacy. God answers with his voice. His, he says, oh, I don't hear from God. God never talks to me like that. Have you ever felt his peace? When you feel God's peace, you have heard from God. He speaks in answer to our prayers in peace. You see, he, he speaks to my heart, it's true, but he also speaks like in boom, there's his peace. You know why? Isaiah, what is it, 26.3? You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, steadfastly focused on you because he trusts in you. This peace which we're to guard, which we're to cherish, which we're to value is our legacy from him. If I have his peace, ain't nothing gonna move me. Example. Um, example. I, many of you know this, not everybody knows this. Um, my wife is a my wife is a, the manager of a horse farm, manager of a 18, 20 horse farm. It's big. And, uh, you know, she's been here for 10 years and the manager's house resides on the farm. Well, um, she became pregnant uh, uh, back in uh, March. And in about, was it May, June, early June, we find out through the grapevine, not from the owner, who the owner is like a mother to her. They're very close. That the farm is up for sale, which means we may not have a home for our child. We don't know what our future is. And um, so that really rocked me as a, as a father. I mean, I am a father. This is her first. It's my third. I know the father protection instinct, and um, but she was hurt because she found out through the grapevine, and uh, you know she certainly talked it out with the boss. But boss, but the point is that anxiety is this is a real cause for, at least in the world's eyes, anxiety. So, like, bear that in mind when I go on to this next step. As a caveat, keep this in mind that the future is unsure. We don't know what, you know, likely that if there's a new person buying the farm, they'd want to keep the employees, but you never know. So bear that in mind and keep that aside. God has in my life been seeking that I trust him, that I trust in him rather in my, than in myself. And I failed miserably. I don't know about you, but I have failed over and over and over, and still he loves me, and he gives me more chances. <sighs> because there was a time when I was really poor, and it was before I was a voice teacher. Oh, now you know what I do. It was before I was a voice teacher, and um, by the way, I, I am an ordained minister. I, I, I pastored a church, but I was also bivocational, full disclosure. That's right. If, he, if we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny his name, is what, others, uh, uh, what other versions says. His name is faithful. He can't deny himself, and he loves us. It's because of the blood of Jesus. It's what Jesus did that he loves us, and he nurtures us. My, I am the vine and my father is the farmer, the gardener. Father, as another caveat, father is very deeply involved in this whole process of building a people for himself to love. He, it comes from him. I would think of God on a father on the, father on the throne. Okay, you guys do it. Holy Spirit and Jesus, you do it. And let me know when you're done. Not in the least. The Father is the one who's orchestrating the whole thing because Jesus said he is the exact radiance, the exact representation of all of the nature of Father in heaven. 
And the Father is love. Anyway, he cannot, so Father is not angry with us. He's not angry because I failed so much. He's interested in building up a person of faith, and he can't do it without, you know, some of these younger guys like Jim Elliott, God, you know, what an example. Some of these young guys get it. I didn't, okay? Even though God appeared, you know, however he did by his spirit to me and, and, and did some miraculous things, I, I didn't get it. You know, when, when I became a Christian, my um, parents did uh, disown me. And I was a 19-year-old kid at Juilliard. I was alone in New York City without any form of, you know, support. They took everything away from me because they wanted to force me back into the Jewish fold. But I, I couldn't. I, I met God. Uh, and I, I, met, I came into this with fear because anxiety was, you know, I was, I was abandoned. I had a lot of abandoned issues. So God understood that too. And he said, I'll be your father. I, I used to have a great relationship with my father. Um, that all changed because when I became a Christian, no more. So um, God worked with me. God loved me. Um, God, um, you know, case in point, I have keep that caveat there. Uh, I, I, I at least, you, know, you all know the car, at least. I would talk about it. And God assured me, I married someone in, living an hour away. I have a lease. I'm going to use all, burn up all these miles. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? God said to me, specifically, he said, spoke to my heart and said, don't worry. It's not going to be an issue. All right. But I mean, while I'm still looking, I'm still looking at cars. What am I going to do? What am I going to So my wife says, didn't God tell you not to worry? I said, oh, um, well, I'm not worrying. Um, I'm just, you know using my mind to seek out options. You know, uh, the scripture says, after all, God gave us a mind. Uh, trust in the Lord with most of your heart. Uh, you can lean a little bit on your own understanding. In most of your ways, acknowledge him and hope for the best. Shoot that dice. Hopefully it'll come out right. You know, I don't think he said that. He said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean, don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll set it. He'll set it straight. So, um, I COVID hit, and I, you know what? I went down to Baltimore and I preached about this, and I said, Do you know that after all these years, I, I have ultimately bought the car, and there's another story there. But ultimately, COVID hit, and I, it took me like an extra year or two to hit the mileage that I would have hit had COVID not hit. Don't worry about it. I got this. So the, the Lord spoke to me about the house in my heart, and he says, basically the same thing. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. Um, he said, you're not going anywhere anytime soon, which, which doesn't mean we're not going anywhere. But uh, I started getting worried. And you know what he said to me? He said, he spoke to my heart and he said, will you trust me this time? Will you trust me this time? And I think he's saying that to all of us. Will we trust him this time? And I, and I got on my knees and I cried. I said, yes, I'm so sorry. You've given me such, such experience with you and I failed you. I have walked away from you. I'm no better, you know, when I, was a, when I was a young man, I'd read about the, even the good kings in the Old Testament, how, you know, I said, how could they do that? Those such bad, they, how could they do that? They knew God. You know, when Asa steps away from God and trusts in his own way, and, you know, God delivered him of a million, a million, a million so Libyans and, and Ethiopians were against 400,000, and God delivered him, and, and God and God gave him all, all the the booty of the of the uh, of, of the victory. Not only that, but on the surrounding towns, the, the fear of the Lord fell on the surrounding towns. And God gave they they ransacked it, and they be, he became very very wealthy. Asa did, and he stored his he 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 lined the temple with all of that. He lined his palace with all that. Thirty years, thirty five years later, he gets complacent, and what happens? You know, the King Baasha of Israel makes a, 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 a barricades, a, a, what's the word? He, he, he puts a, a, 
embargo on, on the on 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 Judah and built up you know built up cities against them fortresses so what does Baasha do I'm sorry so what does uh, Asa do he empties the blessings that God had given him to call upon the king of Syria to help him and he does and you know and that he that's fine it goes the problem goes away he used the blessings that god had used that given him god had given him by faith and trusting him he used the blessings that god had given him to make a deal with the enemy to to do to, to do his plan b plan c plan d and and then the prophet comes to him and says you know you're foolish god would have delivered him god, the, the, the eyes of the lord runs runs throughout the earth seeking searching for someone whose heart is wholly his that he might show himself strong on his behalf you've acted foolishly and from now on you will have wars and and what does asa do he doesn't repent he gets mad he persecutes the prophets he doesn't end well he even gets a disease in his feet doesn't call upon god but calls upon the doctors he dies there are so many stories of the of the kings becoming complacent. Some of them uh, revive and and repent, and some of them, like Asa, don't. But I used to laugh at them and mock them. How could you do that? But you know what? I did that. The older I get, the more I see myself in those things, because I go for <clears throat> God has blessed me now. So when I have a problem, I'll throw money at it. I'll throw whatever I can do. I don't need to call call on God. So in God in his mercy would throw me a problem that I can't handle, like my wife getting cancer. And I got to get on my knees and call out to him. My wife wasn't healed. I would have liked her to have been. But God gave me himself. And God comforted me. And he was there with me. I knew. I know that. And, and, you know, God doesn't heal everybody of everything. I'm sorry. For, for, is appointed to, for It is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the, ju the judgment. You know, even poor Lazarus had to die twice. You know, everybody dies. God heals. I do believe that. But people die. You know? We seek him, as he says, to he God heal, heal, heal. But sometimes it doesn't happen. And we don't know the we don't know the tapestry of the love of God from this side of creation, but we we trust in Him, and I trust in Him, and I thank you for the life that my late wife had, um, and and all the all the invaluable lessons that she taught me. So so that caveat is, will you trust me this time? And I say, yes, Lord, yeah, I I will. So now you see, I have plan, I have the ability to have Plan B and C, but now you see. Lean not on your own understanding, to me says, I'm going to take that same mind that God gave me, that head of mine, that he gave me, and instead of going to plan B, C, and D, and E, which I can do, I'm going to keep focused on plan A and trust him. I'm going to make my mind serve God by faith. I will make my mind serve him and submit my mind to him to what he says even if it's even if my flesh curdles in the process <laughs> you see without faith it's impossible to please him i want to please him to trust in him by faith i mean trust so we grow in trust we and and you know, so what if we're wrong what if we believe something that actually isn't right and it turns out that it wasn't wrong that's a good question Stephen. i'm glad you asked it are we condemned if it is faith that pleases him if we're mistaken in what we're believing he'll correct us but the faith will bless him do you understand the faith that is let's say <laughs> let's say god is really saying go look for go look for houses go look for apartments stephen <laughs> which he's not. Let's say he really wants me to do that. You know, you really should do plan B, Stephen. And I misheard him. I misunderstood. But my faith pleased him um, because I desired to follow him. 
And so far, how do I know if it's God? He's given me his peace. There's a lot of stuff going on all around me. There really is. There is a lot of stuff been going on around me. Uh, I've been through things that I wish no one goes through. But God has always been there. And he's met me with his peace. Because he is real. He is a very real. And in my 43 years of knowing him, he's never forsaken me. I have set my love on him. You have set your passions on him. If you keep your passion on him, how if if you ask for for a loaf of bread, will he give you a stone? He's a loving father. If we set our love for him, he will always come through for us one way or another. We can trust him. I was told by uh, I used to live in Princeton and by a uh, uh, an intern Princeton Theological Seminary said that do you know that the Hebrew Aramaic words for bread and stone are alike, and that a child would would in his lisping or you know how you say give me wawa you know a child would speak like that they would they would commonly mistake the two words if a, if a child asks a father for bread will he give him a stone God knows our hearts he would not give us a stone so if we follow him by trusting in him. He is there. I guarantee it. But there's more here. And, and I want to I want to close it down because I want to help my wife in the in the in the barn do stalls. It's not fair in a way she's doing them all herself and she's pregnant, but um there's a lot at stake here. There's a lot at stake. My faith in him puts a lot at stake. And here's what's at stake. Your faith in him puts a lot at stake. It's not just my life that's affected, but everybody's life around me gets affected by my faith in him. It's like I put a drop of stone in the water, blip, 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 blip. you got little waves, it ripples, it ripples out. People are watching us. You know, we talk about witnessing for God, witnessing for Jesus. And then, you know, the four spiritual laws, the Roman road. They don't believe in the Bible anymore, folks. They don't believe in it. It's like you might as well be quoting the Quran at them. But there is something that the Quran doesn't have. That is the supernatural truth of a living God who answers according to who answers faith according to his word, according to trust. And and they are looking at us when we when we when we have uh, our mindset set. That's why he says if 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 we, if we if we uh, have believed in him, we setting our minds on him, set our minds on things above. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Not before then. The mind is important, and I have set it to please Him. I have set it to trust in Him. I'm setting my mind on the things above. I'm sending my mind, even at the cost of the things that I see. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, ignoring my re earthly responsibilities. Please don't think that I, I I work for a living, for goodness sakes. But I'm, but I'm setting my mind to believe in him who comes above. Read his word. What is it about him that I can learn? What is he going to speak to me through his word? What, um, how, I need you, Lord, impact my life. I'm setting my things above so that you can impact me, change me. That, that when I walk by trusting in you, you, you act. And when they see you, you affect them because it, because uh, uh, God's trusting in him, there's power that is released. There's supernatural God power that is released through our trust in him because he does things that, that we can't do for ourselves. Example, how is it that a man who has got a wife who's dying has joy in his heart? How is that possible? How is it possible that someone whose wife will be, whose wife is going to have a baby who may be homeless, has peace? 
they're watching us. They're watching us. This peace isn't fake. The peace is real because I trust him. And you know what? I said to my wife, you know, let's say we're homeless, which is doubtful. Let's say we're homeless and, and we got to, you know, we have no home to, 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 to have the baby, you know, to, to have a baby. I think that we're in good company. Jesus gave birth, uh, Mary gave birth in a manger. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny, but it's true. There isn't anything the world can dish out at us. There isn't anything the world can dish out on us that can steal our peace from God if we trust in him. People say, my wife used to say to me, and I'd get nervous a lot, she, where's your faith? And that would be come off as a little condemning, but she's right. In whom are you, in what are you putting your faith? You see, when you and I, I got to wrap this up. I'm really sorry. I can go on and I just want to bless you. I want you to know the God that I know. I know you do. I just want you to experience the love that, that, that you can have for him and, and the, the, the nearness and the closeness of, of walking in a life with God in the, in the every day. I, I just wish that. So it's who we put our, it's what we put, I can't, I can't. It's, it's who we put our faith in, what we put our faith in. Then if we put our faith in a God who loves us and believe in his word, nothing, nothing, nothing can say. I'll give you one more thing. I, I, I got to. Why do you think Paul said, I am convinced? that neither angels nor principalities nor how, that scripture. Could, could, could you put that scripture up, Thomas? I'm convinced. Do you know why he said he was convinced? Because he was convinced. Convinced means, Vince is the Greek for victory. He was, he was, he was won over. Here's a man who went to heaven. That's right. Here's a man who died and went to heaven. He was stoned to death and raised to life. Many people think that he had his encounter when he went to heaven, when he's heard things that... No, you don't need to be sorry. When you heard things that can't be uttered, he had died and gone... He, that, that people think that he had, whether in body or out of body, I, I, who knows, I don't know. But he, he was in heaven. And he saw these great, overwhelming revelation of the presence of God, who God is, his nature, his reality, that stuff that comes, flows forth from the heart of God that's love. That's a love that's agapeo, that, that is not possible to encounter without him. It's, it's not found in the world apart from knowing him. Not a storge, eros, phileo, none of it. Is, 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 it's, it's, it's a stuff that comes from me. And, and because he knew it, he said, I am convinced that what Thomas wrote. I'm convinced he knew it. He said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. He meant it because he knew what was waiting for him. He said, if I stay, it's for your sake. But I'm torn. I want to I want to go to him because I know where I'm going. I know what awaits me. When he came before the chopping block, it was like I ran the race, it's done. I can see you face to face again, Lord. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming back. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna give the 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 mantle, the gavel to someone else. Give the give the the work the work boots the work belt to somebody else now. I'm coming home to you. So he said, this same Paul said in his knowing, firsthand knowing of Jesus, he said, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously, he freely gave him up for us all, graciously give us all things? So I have that trust in that word in my mind and my heart. And my heart, my mind is serving that word to trust in Jesus. I am not moved. 
Not because of who I am. I failed him over and over again. For goodness sakes, it's not me. It's I'm convinced of his love. I'm convinced of him. God, guys, none of this is about you. It's about him and who he is. Catching an understanding, a revelation, just a, 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 a sight, a vision of who he really is makes us convinced, like Paul, to say, he loves me. That's th that chapter is a victorious chapter of the love of God. Th therefore, there is now no, no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are called according to his purposes. Oh, I've heard people say this. Oh, I'm not, am I called? How do I know I'm called according to his purpose? How, how, how do I know? Uh, that's only for them. That's not for me. How many times have you heard people say, the promises of God are for them and not for me? How, do, how many times have you, how do I know it's real? How do I know I'm in his purpose? Oh, let me tell you something. The purpose of God is fairly broad. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. That is his purpose. God's purpose is that none should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of salvation in his son, everlasting. That's his purpose. I am in that purpose because I believe you are in that purpose because you believe. So if there's any question, if you are in the purpose of God ever, his purpose was redemption. And if you say yes in your heart, for with a heart, man speaks what he believes. With a heart, if you say that in your heart, it's believing is not just a passing acquaintance with facts. It's pisteuo eis, believing into with your being, the fiber. You believe you are in his purposes, whether you like it or not. So start, start owning it. You are in God's purpose. You are someone who God wants to demonstrate his love, his purposes, his glory. His salvation to the world. They're not gonna you can go you can go with the Roman word road all you want. They're gonna say, what? Okay. Uh, uh, God's gonna have to, if you go with the Roman road, I guarantee you this, God's gonna have to, you know, put some anointing or spirit on it in order to make it because they don't believe the word. But they but they but they are still looking. People are actually looking for God, whether they know it or not, they're looking. For, uh, for, for the reality of something beyond themselves. Exactly. I was going to say that verse. Actually, I was going to start with this. And, and this is Butler. This is how I'm going to close. Thank you. Why, do you. why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I say? That's how I started the message on Sunday. Why do you call me Lord and do what, do, do what I, don't do what I say? Hold off a little, psalmist. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? And he talks about those who build, the man who builds his house deeply into the solid rock, and when the winds come, it stays. And then the one who doesn't, it's on the shifting sand. What is the shifting sand? The shifting sand is the, is the common thought of what is wisdom for the day that is not of God. Why do we have to believe God by faith? It's because it's so against what we see in the world system. Believing God, loving your enemies, doing everything he said is so different that to obey him is, is, is foolishness in the eyes of the world. But you know what? When we go to obey, when we go to believe, he imparts the power to do so. He, 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 like Corey Timboom, he'll never give you, he'll never send you on the trip without without giving you the ticket for for it without giving you the provision he'll he'll give you the ticket to, to he'll give you what you need to walk by faith to show them and um so what is it that he's what is it okay what is it that is going to make me build my house on the solid rock 
well, I have to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that. No. Just as Butler said, he nailed it. Believe the one whom he has sent. What do we do to do the works of the Father? Believe. And these are Jewish people, my people, who think that working the law is how you do the work of God. No. Believing was, was, was revolutionary to them, and it, it probably their jaws dropped because don't honor the Sabbath, you know, don't, you know, there are 600 and, uh, 613 laws in the, old, uh, in the, in the, in the Tanakh, in, in, the, in the five Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, 613. We could do that. No, believe, because you can't do that. The law is there to tell you you cannot live it. You cannot attain to God. God must rescue you. And the thing is that um, when you go to obey him, he will give you the power to do so. If you seek him with your heart, he will do it. And you will live the law. He said, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, you know what? Our righteousness does surpass the Pharisees because theirs was a man righteousness. Ours is a God righteousness because he is the vine and we are the branches. He, his spirit lives through us and makes us holy. He makes us holy. It's not something we're doing. It's something we're believing. And he works his life out through us. This, I'll do this later. But the thing is this, that believing who he has sent is very easy. The things that he shows me, the things in his word, I'm going to put my trust in them. It's not a question of, it's a, uh, let me just say, say this, it's a question of, of trust more than obedience. Because if I trust him, I will obey. Trust and obey, for there's no better way. I think I'm going to end it with that, and I'll pray. Uh, I want to help my wife. Maybe she's done already. <sighs> That's right. I'm just going to ask everybody, please, understand that his presence, his peace, is the answer you're going to get. You may not see answers to whatever concerns you this side of eternity, but, you know, keep them. Keep them. Give me you. Keep the blessings. Give me you. For in you, Lord, is your blessing. That's all the blessing I need is your presence. Because God's already blessed me with things because I believed him. And then I got, I got dry. The blessings became the focus. And, um, and now the blessings are fluff. You know, everything's on the altar. Everything's on the altar. And I've had to prove it. And that's going to be another message. But um, so I love you all. And God loves you all. And, and if there's anything I said that was offensive, I'm really sorry. I, never, I meant nothing to be offensive. I just want... I just so desperately want people to draw closer to him in the quiet and to the secret. Yes. When you're on your knees, when you're in, in your bedroom, you're, when you're on your bed, going to sleep, say, I love you. Make yourself more known to me. It's a passion that you would rekindle the passion that you have for the eternal God who loved you enough that he spared nothing. He spared nothing. He didn't even spare his own son. I'm not going to talk about this next thing at all, but maybe next time. But, you know, John 1 1 comes before John, Genesis 1 1. Did you know that? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was self existent. Did you know that the, that the, that the Word came before heaven? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heaven. The heavens are not pre-existent along with Adonai, along with Yeshua and Abba, Father. Heaven was created. And it's my meditation that heaven was created, that he would have an appropriate, lack of better word, venue to share with those who would believe in the son of his love that he gave out of his love for us who would love him and believe in him. The angels, ministers, ministering spirits created to minister to his will and to minister for us and protect us, 
to do his bidding. They're, the glory of God is so great they cover their faces, the seraphim do. The glory of God is so great that heavens cannot hold it. Everything was created through him, and it was created to hold him as a place for us. In, I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions for us. He created it for us. This God loves us very much. And, and he loves us so much that we can trust him. We can love him. It's affectionate. Jonathan Edwards talks about our affections are of God. Jonathan Edwards was, was a, the, the third president of Princeton University, one of the greatest, you know, great awakening revivalists of, of, of American history, and one of the greatest philosophers of, of, of his age. Our affections are for him, and they deserve to be so because of uh, he was extravagant in his love for us. Heaven, heaven, the bottom line was heaven was created to house us who would love him, that we could have an appropriate place to behold the glory of the, of the, of, 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 of the great and holy, radiant, glorious, Revelation, book of Revelation, fire in his eyes, throne covered with emerald rainbow God. He's great, and he loves us, and he wants us to know him in this way, passionately. And that's where I'm going to end it. I'm just, can I pray? For, do you mind if I pray for us? May I pray for you? Can I just ask you to do something silly? Would you put your hand over your heart, your own heart? And God, we love you. I pray that you'd rekindle our hearts to love you passionately, to love you like a Jim Elliot did, to love you more than anything in this life, to love you more than what we have, more than what we see, more than ourselves, more than any relationship. Because it can only be in that kind of love that all our relationships are right. I pray, O oh Lord, that you revive our hearts. We love you. We love you so much. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of God. It is the power of God to save everyone who would believe to the Jew first and to the Gentile. And and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of my passion for him because he loves me. I'm not ashamed of him. And neither, neither should you be, will you be. You know, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now look at that. It doesn't say, let your works shine. Let your light shine. Plenty of works out there, plenty of benevolent works. If I love him, if the, the Spirit of God is shining and radiating in my heart, my light's going to shine, and then they'll see the good works that come because he lives in me. Let your light shine. Jesus said, if anyone believe in him, in me, out of his innermost being will flow forth rivers of living water. I am the light of the world. I'm going to stop. Let your light shine. Let his light shine. It's light. It's not works. The, lights the light comes first. The light is there by faith, without which you cannot please God. It's there by trust in him who is able. All right, I love you all, and I'll see you online. I got to go redeem this time to help my wife. All right. <laughs> we have all week. Try the veal. <laughs> Dip your waitresses. <laughs> all right. I can be funny. God has a sense of humor. All right. I'll, I'll talk to you later. I got to go. Bye. Thank you all for coming. Thanks everyone for showing up. Um.